Many people know us for our firewalls. And in fact, almost three out of four firewalls shipped worldwide come from our production. But actually, we do way more than that. We have a very broad portfolio to help you implement cybersecurity wherever you need. A lot has happened in the field of cybersecurity since our company was founded in the year 2000. The threat landscape is more serious than ever. So we have state-sponsored threat actors who now increasingly attacking also private companies and also it's more easier to attack companies than it has ever before. Who of you has seen such a screen before? We call that ransomware, that's malware, which encrypted the user's device. So no data or no applications, nothing is accessible anymore to the user. That's, I mean, maybe for the user that seems like, okay, I, I can take now some days off, but for the company, that's the worst case. Users can no work any longer. And as you could maybe read from the, the text, which is shown here, I mean, this is the result after the malware has encrypted all the user's files. The attackers offer the victim to decrypt the files if they pay a hefty fee. And we at Fortinet have observed that such attacks have increased over the recent years. And the reason for that is really simple. It just simply pays off for the attackers. For a couple of hundreds or thousand dollars, you could go to the darknet and hire some hackers. And the ransom you get, the money you get back eventually, if they're successful, is quite large for the effort. There is even a thing called ransomware as a service. So you can really hire hackers to do the job for you. And there is even a commission plan for that. So if you help the hackers to get inside a network and do damage to the company's environment, you get up to 20% of basically the revenue, so to say, of the ransom they would receive. And what do you think? How long does it take an attacker to find a vulnerability until compromise the target system? And the guess is it days, three days, four weeks? According to research, I cannot really give you an answer, but I can tell you it's less than an hour, always. There is research which comes to the conclusion it takes around 24 minutes. There is research which comes up with a result of around 90 seconds on average. So the days where you would maybe imagine how an attacker works, right, sitting in the somewhere in a, in a dark building and um, typing on his computer, these are gone. All the attacks are fully automated. And now let's look at the defender side. What do you think? How long does it take a company to find out that they've been breached? It takes an attacker to successfully compromise a system to a way higher amount and lower the time it takes for companies to detect that something happened, right? That should be the goal here. And in order to do so, we maybe need to think a little bit more like the attackers. And I've chosen a really simple example here to illustrate how such an attack could work in practice. So that's really from a real world scenario. And in this case, the attackers used the simple phishing. I bet you guys know you should never click on links which do not really seem, um, how should I say, trustworthy. But in this case, the victim, the user, was tricked into clicking on the link because it was a more sophisticated attack. The attackers used techniques such as spoofing. That means they falsified the address, the sender address. So it, the, the email appeared like it came from the same company, which it didn't. It was an external mail. And the email then contained instructions to open the attachment, things you should not do, but what the user did, of course. And eventually, the malware started to run. And the first thing the attackers did after they persisted on the system, they launched the so-called privilege escalation attack. Does anyone know what that is? Okay, some of you know, that's good. So basically they exploited a vulnerability, an unpatched vulnerability in their active, in, in the victim's active directory, which allowed them to gain domain admin privileges. And with these domain admin privileges, what is the first thing you would do, right? deactivate 
the company's EDR and anti-malware services. And this is what they did. And from that point on, they had basically full access to everything without anything stopping them. And this is what you can basically see here with all these examples shown here in the timeline. And last but not least, they exfiltrated the data and they encrypted all the devices to additionally gain money if the victim pays them the ransom to decrypt the files again. So what can we do to fend off such an attack? The answer is we need to think a more or we need to look at this from a more strategic point of view. And luckily, all cyber attacks have basically the same anatomy, which is shown here. So the phases through which we go through during a cyber attack are always the same as shown here. And it's a bit also similar to what, we, what you would have in a military operation. The first thing you do if you want to attack is reconnaissance. Scouting out for possible entry points scouting out for possible weaknesses, vulnerabilities. You can imagine this as walking next to a building and trying to open all the doors. And eventually, if one door is open, you can just walk in. Quite a simple case, right? But this is exactly what we're doing in the reconnaissance phase. We try to look at which doors are open, where could I enter? Once we found a weakness, found a vulnerability, which we could exploit, we craft weapons for that. That means, in the world of cybersecurity, we either purchase tools, you can simply do that on the darknet, or you write your own tools, or you just use open source software. It depends on what, whatever you want to do. Then you launch your weapon. We go to the delivery and exploitation phase. We persist on the system. And from there, the malware usually establishes a command and control communication. This allows the attacker to send commands to the compromised system, exfiltrate data through that back channel, or load additional code, or maybe even attack other systems from that specific system which has been compromised here. And last but not least, the attacker will then eventually, or maybe not if we can stop him, reach his or her goals. That's the actions and objectives. So in all these phases, basically up to C2, you can do prevention and detection mechanisms, except in the action phase. But there, you can still minimize the time it takes you to detect that something happened. Right. So in every phase, you can do something. And the earlier you detect that something is going on, the better, because the lower the impact and the lower the damage, which is caused. So in an ideal world, you would already in the reconnaissance phase, find out that somebody's trying to attack you, trying to find open doors in your environment. And from there, you would automatically tell your defense mechanisms that they should set up countermeasures. Now, what you also see here on this slide are basically all of our products which we have in place. And guess what? The goal of our portfolio is to do this by default. So our products are natively integrated that if we would spot in the reconnaissance phase that something is going on, we can automatically deploy countermeasures at the latest stages. And this approach, this, this native integration of our products is what we call the security fabric. At Fortinet, we believe that complexity is the enemy of security and therefore, your cybersecurity solution should be as simple and straightforward to manage as possible, no matter if your systems are running locally in the cloud or uh, you're running in a hybrid environment, regardless if you're securing IT or OT. Our goal is to offer you a cybersecurity platform which integrates with your existing infrastructure because that's the only way to easily implement automation, and automation is key to keep up with the current speed of attackers. And now talking about integrations laying the foundation for automation, we realize that you have existing investments with other vendors, and therefore our fabric integrations also work with our alliance partners. And today we're really excited to officially announce 
that we have onboarded Securusys in our uh, environment, and we really welcome Securusys as Fabrica Alliance partner today. Over the last 12 months, we worked on the integration of our products. And just a few weeks ago, we came uh, or we released a software, world, a software build which contains exactly this integration. Now, you may be wondering what that integration is. And, well, as said before, we want to detect attacks as early as possible to minimize the impact and the damage. I'm sure that by default, the HSM solutions of Securus help you already in early stages by ensuring that you have secure keys. And in our case, we went down the defense in depth and the hardening part. So the integration makes sure that we hardened the way how we use keys. And I'll show you in a minute how this was done. This is Bob. Bob is surfing the internet on some questionable websites. And Bob is also using SSL TLS, which is usually good, right? But in this case, what Bob does not know is that after clicking on the link, he downloaded a malicious file, which automatically executed in this very simple example. Now, usually what our products can do is detect which website is being accessed by users and also to detect if a file is malicious or not. But since the network traffic is encrypted, we don't see anything. That's the goal of encryption, right? You shouldn't see anything. So what can we do to help Bob to detect this attack? We apply something which we call SSL TLS inspection. In this case, we let the first hello message pass through to the server. The server will reply with the certificate and the public key. The FortiGate will inspect this certificate, and if the connection is trustworthy, we will continue establishing the connection. For this, we take a CA certificate, which resides on the FortiGate usually. With this CA certificate, we create a new um, we create a new server certificate for the web server. We sign it. And since the CA certificate is present in the user's certificate store, Bob's browser will then trust this connection. And eventually, we will get two SSL connections. So one between Bob's browser and the FortiGate, and one between the FortiGate and the original web server. This allows us to inspect all the traffic in clear text on the FortiGate. But if you take now a look at the keys, there is a bit room for improvement, right? While the SSL TLS inspection works, technically works perfectly as shown before, we can do a little bit better here. Although the FortiGate offers a trusted platform module, a so-called TPM, to store the keys locally, and where the keys are practically actually secure, the problem is once you would extract these keys from our environment, then we cannot control what happens with the keys. And the simple use case for this are, for instance, backups. So if you would back up your keys, back up your configuration, we would always recommend you to encrypt this information, but some admins prefer to not do that for whatever reason. And as Robert said today in the morning, if somebody gains access to your keys, they actually already have your identity. And that's the worst case. This is what we want to prevent. Because imagine now somebody takes the keys from the file share, they could launch an attack on your whole corporate network because the signing CA certificate is trusted by the certificate stores and the endpoints. So what we've done is basically we integrated Securus's Primus, Primus HSM and Cloud HSM with our FortiGate for SSL and TLS inspection. If the TLS reply is then received by the FortiGate, we will use this connection to generate a key and use this key for the reply to the client. So eventually, 
this offers us the benefits of two worlds. You get um, trusted scanning of your network connections, while at the same time protecting the confidentiality of your keys. The good news is this is just one of our integrations. We're working on way more. There's more to come on our roadmap, and I invite everybody to visit us at our booth, not just for the goodies, but also to talk about where we can help you. That's one integration with one product, but we're working on more integrations in the future.